Welcome to the Tanzer Productions podcast on this Monday, August 26th, 2019. Today I have a chat with Zena Harris. She is the president of the GreenSpark Group and has her master's degree at Harvard in sustainability and environment management. She uh, is just trying to implement environment responsibility in many different productions across the globe. And uh, she's worked with HBO, 20th Century Fox, NBC Universal, Amazon. She also works with the Vancouver International Film Festival, the VIF people. And uh, if you are interested in environmental sustainability at all, you will love this interview. She's great and has done a lot. So. Here you go. Here is Zena Harris. You are listening to the Tons of Productions podcast. Hello, Zena. How you doing? Great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, thank you for coming on and taking the time to talk to me. Uh, I interviewed Julie Bernard from uh, Real Green, and she spoke highly of you and told me of your accomplishments somewhat. And uh, I, after researching online, realized that it was a huge amount of accomplishments, and I am really amazed at what you've done. Well, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I, I really believe that this uh, this is the industry that's going to um, really tip the scales in terms of sustainability. So um, I love working in it. So <laughs> oh, I did <laughs> too. Uh, I was I was in the industry for over ten years, um, and uh, I seen the progression of uh, environmental acts with productions as time's gone on. And when I first started, I was quite amazed at uh, the amount of waste that came out of productions. And, and wow, you know, uh, it was astounding when you don't uh, see it every day. And mm -hmm. after time, uh, um, they stopped using, say, um, I don't know, cans for soda and, and water bottles. And they switched to Crafty having a, a big water dispenser and everyone had a cup kind of thing. And mm -hmm. it changed uh, uh, as years have gone on. And... It is really great that you are uh, um, actually behind all this. I didn't know there was someone behind this. I thought it was just productions just having a conscience or something. Well, there are actually a lot of people behind this. Um, I am fortunately, uh, you know, one of them, but it comes from many different levels. So um, I think the industry in general is, um, you know, at folks at different levels are have been pushing on this. Uh, you know, impact reduction for a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I feel fortunate that I, I guess, was in the right place at the right time and started talking about it. And, um, and in Vancouver, it just really, you know, folks started, their ears started perking up. And, um, and I think it's because of the groundwork that was laid, you know, years before um, when Real Green was originally started and, um, and there was some um, awareness around the idea of impact reduction um, on set uh, back in, I think, 06 um, was when, when, you know, folks really started honing in and, and thinking about it. And then, um, you know, it was sort of a pent-up demand. And oh, yeah. I, I noticed I, that. That's when I started yeah. in the film industry, actually, 2005-ish, and I noticed the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I really think there was, you know, a pent-up demand when folks started talking about it back then. Um, I think others may have, you know, um, welcomed that conversation, um, didn't really know exactly what to do, and and but, but had it in the back of their mind. And then fast forward to... Um, 2012, 2013, when I started talking more about it and trying to, to work on it specifically in the Vancouver industry. And I think folks are ready for it then. It was a, kind of a timing thing. And I think that's how the industry works in a lot of ways. Um, it's all about timing. So, right. Um, 
So I think that that really, um, you know, the awareness early on and then getting to a place where people were ready to do something, um, I think that that has been really key. And then you also have uh, folks from, you know, studios in the States, larger, um, larger organizations, you know, still around the same time, 06 or so, they were starting to focus on it too. So it just took a number of years to get to the point where it is starting to trickle down within their organizations. Oh, I see. And yeah, and then it was kind of, you know, perfect storm where we are all now working on, um, you know, integrating sustainable practices on set. Um, I mean, we still have a long way to go. Oh yeah, uh, no, it's not perfect by any means. I yeah. Right, but but you can see more and more and more um, crew members are focusing on it. Industry organizations are supporting initiatives um, related to sustainability. Uh, studios are are focusing on it, um, and it's you know becoming more of a topic in the mainstream press. Um, and so it's it's this is where I say you know I think it just comes from a lot of different levels. Oh yeah. I, I think it's a hot topic. Actually, the environment is, is big right now. Um, with on people's minds because all of this, the storms and all of the horrible things, all the, you know, the plastic in the oceans and stuff. And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, to see the waste that the, the, um, uh, industry created the film industry, but they could fix that. It's like a problem that it's slowly being solved over time, which is great to see. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's interesting. Um, the way we talk about it is not, um, you know, it's not like we're, you know, we're talking about actions that can't be done. Right. In fact, we're talking about opportunities that the industry has and opportunities for innovation and a way to shift from, you know, a negative, like impactful way of doing things to a more positive, uh, constructive way of doing things. So the sort of adage of, oh, sustainability is doing without is really not the case. It's actually a, a fantastic opportunity to innovate and um, try something different. And, you you know, there are many examples of productions that have kind of approached, you know, their given task or, or, or their production with that mindset and have come to find, you know, this great alternative or, you know, now a new way of doing things. And so we've got case studies now that show um, what can be done, uh, the opportunities that do exist, and if these can inspire now and and help shift, you know, other productions, other locations, farther afield, um, that's fantastic. And I think we're really we're really moving down that pipeline of um, you know inspiration and showing what's possible. Oh yeah, it's it's amazing. Like. In this industry, there's creative people all the time that come up with solutions and creations and new things that aren't the environment. This is just one of the things they have to uh, focus on, and they can do the same towards the that and make it um, work easier. And it's not, your, like you said, not doing without. It's just doing it in a better way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it's really interesting because um, every department on production contributes to sustainable production. So when the art department has really creative ideas and interesting um, ways to approach, um, you know, what they do uh, in maybe through a sustainable lens, that affects other departments and construction gets on board. They order certain materials that are going to help achieve. Right. Is it like a competition between departments kind (laughs) of? Oh, it's everybody can contribute to sustainable production. When you really think about it, it is not you know, a bolt on one person runs around, picks up trash kind of right. thing. This yeah. is holistic, whole scale sustainability um, sort of mindset or lens that a production can really, um, you know, look through. And, and, and if that happens, like everybody's contributing, everybody is, um, you know, is in it to win it really. Um, and oh, yeah. lots of great things happen. Well, one of the solutions that exactly what you're talking about uh, is um, that uh, uh, Julie told me about was plugs being put into parks, say, and they don't have to use generators and run diesel engines all the time and stuff like that. And those are ingenious and actually easy, easy solutions, it seems. Um, Mm -hmm. To me, I don't know, but I'd never thought of it. But, um, you know, there's a lot of people who are 
working towards those kinds of solutions for problems that aren't really that hard to come up with. Exactly. We have all the technology that we need right now to solve a lot of these problems that, um, or, uh, you know, that we have, uh, or that are perceived problems um, for, for shifting, uh, you know, how we might approach things on set. Um, so we know that a big impact of um, a production's carbon footprint is fuel consumption. Now, fuel consumption comes from, you know, a transportation department and, and, uh, and all of the many vehicles that are used. That's right. one thing. But it also, you know, fuel is used in generators and other equipment. So um, one of the ways to um, reduce fuel consumption is to plug into the grid. And I don't care where you shoot. That is always a better option than running the generator if you can do that. Oh, so yeah. With the, with the film industry, I mean, you shoot all over, you know, Metro Vancouver, for example. Um, so what's starting to happen is industry and the, you know, municipal organizations um, being the Parks Board or the City of Vancouver are now starting to partner and say, okay, um, let's figure this out. We know you film all over. We know there are complaints about generators. So That's sweet. Office. And now we're going to collaborate to figure out these solutions. Why? Because the city of Vancouver now has a mandate to reduce emissions because they have a plan to be the greenest city in the world. Right. And they have an adaptation strategy, but they need all industries to help them get there. To get on and board and to, industry, yeah. Yeah. Massive. Film industry is a big one, right, yeah. in Vancouver. And so now they're partnering. And they're and, and now they got to figure out a way to have more uh, tie-ins, more plugs, basically, in um, popular filming locations um, around the city first, and then it'll just, you know, um, and this will help not only the film industry, but also other um, industries like the food service, food cart industry, um, hospitality, that sort of thing. And so now you've got like multiple industries working together, utilizing this um, solution. Technology is already there. It's a matter of working together to make it happen. And, and that's going to impact like, you know, city uh, sustainability efforts, um, and electrification of uh, transportation, as oh. well as shift the footprint of the film industry um, as well. So huge opportunities. Oh, it's yeah. Really exciting. And, um, and generator, re- reducing um, fuel consumption in generators is really a first step. And there's, t- there's technology that's already there. You need to film in a remote location. There are things like portable electric battery power stations that can replace your generator. Right. Um, you know, we've already got these things and they're being used. And this is what I, I mean with case studies, you know, um, showing um, use case um, really, uh, you know, showing what's possible. So we know this and it's all linked, as you can see. So we know that once you use, you know, these alternative technologies um, that are now becoming more mainstream, so I guess they're not so much alternative anymore, but that actually helps move towards city policy, uh, you know, and strategy there and, um, and then helps overall with emission reduction. So um, pretty exciting stuff. Well, this, I did prep for a lot of years and uh, uh, the generator, like it's not just about being good and nice and uh, good for the environment or whatever. It's more about convenience because having running diesel generators is a pain. To park them, mm-hmm. to, when you, it saves production money to not have them. If I can just show up and I have an electric thing to plug into, they, that's the dream. They want that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, when these uh, these power stations uh, came on, uh, at least in the sort of, um, you know, market test phase. Um, and, and we're still kind of in that. So, you know, uh, I guess uh, now, since it's fairly new, it's been on the market maybe five years or so. Okay. But, um, but uh, you can see people, you know, Jenny Ops and other, you know, other folks who are like, oh, wow, I know how I could use that thing. And it starts to, you know, you, their creative um, mind starts rolling, and you can, you know, you can see how they they see opportunities in this new technology. So, um, oh, yeah, that's that's great. Um, 
Oh, I love it. I, um, I, I actually, before we actually even continue, I wanted to uh, uh, let the listeners um, know who you are because they, you're just a person talking about this, but you actually have a master's degree from Harvard in uh, sustainability and environment management. Yes. Yes. So you know what um, you're talking about. It's not like you're just, uh, uh, I don't know, a PA saying this needs to be done or whatever. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a legitimate, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say. Um, <laughs> well, that's yeah, the way I look um, at it. Yeah, for sure. No, it's, uh, I studied, uh, for my master's, I studied um, corporate sustainability as part of that uh, environment, um, environmental uh, management track. But, um, but yes, uh, so I've, I've been looking at um, corporate sustainability and, uh, and then specifically the entertainment industry um, for a while now. I mean, I, I come to the industry um, from an academic sort of side of things, um, and that really um, provided a good foundation for, um, you know, stepping into an industry and saying, okay, you know, looking around, applying what I know is mm-hmm. happening in other industries or how other industries approach things, and looking at um, motion picture, for example, and saying, okay, um, what can work? How can we adapt certain things? Um, how can we set strategy based on, you know, how other industries are setting strategy? And what are the tools that we might need to, to do this? What are the goals that might align um, um, with other industries? Um, and then how does it work at the project level on set? Um, so that's how I approach it. But yes, you I broke it down and <laughs> looked at a situation that there's a problem and it needs to be fixed. Exactly. So the reason I chose the motion picture, there's a, there's a couple of reasons. Okay. One is that, um, I, when I was in grad school, I had to read a lot of reports about how various industries are incorporating sustainability. And, what I noticed was that entertainment always lagged behind other industries. Okay. And I wondered why that was, if entertainment is so influential just in general with pop culture and, and setting trends and these sorts of things, why why were they lagging behind and what could I do about that? Exactly. Um, and then the second reason was, um, was you know, uh, kind of an extension of that um, is – if I, if society at large is to to change, to shift, how do they do that? Um, what are the influencers of society and media and entertainment and storytelling is such a huge influence? Oh, and growing, in the, our, yeah, it's yeah. massive. It's massive. Yeah. So how then do we integrate into motion picture? Right. Um, integrate sustainability into multi- motion picture and use that as a vehicle for influencing culture at large. Um, I mean, obviously, to do that, we as an industry need to walk the talk. Right. So we need to integrate on our sets and in our organizations. And then we need to be able to communicate that, show examples, um, uh, you know, of our work to the public. In right. various ways, whether it be case studies um, about behind the scenes work or whether it be more subtly or probably not so subtly in some cases or, about, um, you know, what we're saying on screen or what we're doing and modeling on screen, the kinds of products we're using on screen, you know, all of this is, is a huge topic well, right now. Teaching other industries. That's what it really comes down to a lot of mm-hmm. that because if you come up with a, a creative way to be environmentally friendly and to make it uh, sustainable and not really put a kink in your armor, then why not share it with everybody, you know? And uh, who better than the film industry to master this? I agree. I agree because it's, especially on set, I mean, you know, um, depending on this, the size of production, um, but, you know, these productions are, are pretty quick, right? Um, you know, you're, you're doing them for a few months at a time. Um, you know, you prep, you shoot, you wrap, and that project's done until either the next season or that crew moves on to the next feature or that sort of thing. But when you're doing it, you know, in sort of several month cycles, you have the ability to innovate very quickly, whereas yeah. other industries are more long-term and it takes them, you know, 
more of an iter, you know, it takes more time to iterate. Um, and so the film industry can take something, try it, figure out what works and what doesn't um, on, you know, season one, and then implement what they learned, innovate on season two, and you've just gotten that much better within, you know, six months. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've seen examples of that all through different departments. And uh, one example would be uh, the, the transport department uses Duradec and instead of plywood and wrecking that on and, and uh, um, it in also killing trees and whatever it is. But instead of using that, they mm-hmm. use the plastic sheets and uh, and it's reusable and it's environmentally friendly and it didn't really infect them that much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's that's a great example of where, um, you know, a department can do something, make make a slight change and um, and and be better for them and better for the environment yeah. and contribute to the overall sustainable production. Um, so it's it's there are many of these you know ways that um, different departments can sh- contribute. So um, I was going to ask too. So when you decided to um, attack or go not attack but <laughs> go for the film industry and and, and uh, go after that problem of the uh, sustainability, did you? start green spark group then um is that is green spark group your business is that your it it is okay i I thought that because you're president i was like okay it seemed like it (laughs) (laughs) yeah it started with me running around on set um (laughs) yes so when i finished my master's right at that time i was moving to vancouver and i just got really lucky that vancouver happens to be a big film hub in north america oh yeah and um so i started asking around um to see what was going on you know if if it was coordinated in a formal way how could i get involved you know these kinds of things and um so i realized there was a, a bit of a gap in the the um coordination of sustainable production in a formal way um and so i um i got my first project and i decided uh to start a company because i knew that there's you know a lot of opportunity um if i could just uh show you know put forth what i've learned um show that it's possible to integrate and um and i knew that you know just over time, businesses are going to be trending more towards sustainability, and um, the film industry couldn't not do that. So right. um, I took a bit of a chance <laughs> and, um, and started the company. Yeah, and but thank God for we, people like you, human beings like you. I mean, there's people who fight this environmental change and the sustainability. It's weird. It's a strange thing. <laughs> this is something you teach at Harvard, but it's not real. That's That's strange to me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, there there wasn't anyone really focusing on um, consulting, um, uh, sustainability consulting for motion picture in Vancouver. So um, while we had other great infrastructure and vendors in place, um, you know, a bit of coordination around that uh, was, I think, needed. And so I I did. I took a chance. I started a company. That's great. And today we have um, seven people. And we work on production in Vancouver and um, actually all over North America. Um, well, yeah, so I, we, I saw that you were de- dealing with, uh, what, HBO and uh, 21, Century, mm-hmm. 21 Century Fox, NBC Universal, Amazon, a bunch of big, huge production corporations and, and affecting the, the change. That It's great. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, it's been a great journey, and I hope um, much more to come. Uh, there's a lot of production out there that we haven't yet, you know, or that uh, that we haven't touched. So I'm hoping that, um, you know, as we can get the word out, um, show what's possible, inspire folks, um, and really get in there and engage with the crew, that this is just going to, you know, become the new norm and, you um, and we will have hopefully had a, a hand in in influencing the industry. Um, well, it's not just the industry and each production. It's like also the government. Like, is is there going to be any sort of change as far as laws or um, things within uh, the government that has changed or within the unions even? Oh, yeah. Actually, 
actually uh, the unions um, and other industry organizations have been uh, in Metro Vancouver have been um, very supportive of um, the Real Green program, which is a provincial program um, in BC, and and hopefully it'll go further afield in Canada. Um, but we've got um, unions, guilds, uh, industry organizations all supporting that program, and that speaks to um, you know the power of the industry to get behind something, say it's important. Um, it speaks to collaboration because if we didn't have those organizations supporting um, the Real Green program, we could not go as fast and as far, um, you know, without their support. Um, they've got many members. They help get the word out to their membership about various opportunities. Um, and then, you know, they provide financial support so that we can do what um you know, what we plan to do, Real Green has a, a strategic plan, and we're working through that. And um, very and positive it's because of industry support. So, <laughs> yeah, no, it's very positive. It's, it's a it's a it's a great uh, attitude that I noticed within the whole industry from from top to bottom. And uh, uh, it's really I really appreciate it. Mm hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, uh, well, you're an executive director of International Sustainable Campus Network, ISCN? Is that what it is? ISCN, yep. That was my former job. Um, I came from from um, managing a multi-stakeholder international network um, for sustainability in higher education. And um, that was, a, I think, a great learning experience and helped me you know, helped me um, with, uh, you know, taking this, this dynamic, this multi-stakeholder dynamic and, um, you know, it, it from various cultures um, and yeah. applying it to, you know, to what we do in film. Oh, um, I so see. So a, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because, you know, uh, sustainability is approached differently in different parts of the world. So you really have to think about um, the, the local context that you're working in and what's important there and, um, and, and focus on that and then build out from there. Hmm. That's awesome. I, uh, I didn't know it, that even existed. <laughs> That's so hilarious. Yeah, I'm kind of yeah, ignorant so when it comes to this, but it, it's, uh, exactly. it's something that I'm really interested in because I've, I see the progress and, and it's, uh, it's a positive thing for human beings to be a part of. Like I, it's not just the film industry, it's everybody. Oh, yes, every industry. So in that specific case, um, higher ed institutions are absolutely integrating sustainability in various ways across curriculum, uh, you know, um, within, you know, networks like the ISDN to kind of push the boundaries, push the conversation, um, and and really make it happen in, in various parts of the world. And it's, it's about knowledge sharing and, and you know, using... Um, the power of the network to um, to make things happen in your local area. So yeah, exactly. At the at the at your, in your community at the grassroots level, mm-hmm. everyone's got to take part, and it will make a huge, massive difference. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yes. If everybody um, does one thing, I always say, just do one thing, and then that one thing will lead to two and three. Um, and it may seem like your your one thing is small, but um, you know, it, it, every little bit of confidence helps, and um, and I think that once you you know integrate something as a as a habit, then um, you don't have to worry about that. Just kind of what what you do, and and you move on to something else. So, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you about was: uh, are, do you still uh, um, are you still the creative director for Vancouver International Film Festival, VIF? Uh, so I, uh, we partnered with this, um, uh, to collaborate on the sustainable production forum, which is an event that, um, that, you know, again, like, uh, you know, like the absence of a, you know, a sustainability consultant for the film industry in Vancouver, what we are noticing is that there was not a conference, um, for sustainability in motion picture ah. at all in the world. Um, people would have various events or a panel here and a panel there, but there was not a conference to bring everyone together for knowledge sharing. And so 
we approached this in 2015, uh, and they um, were very generous and uh, said, yes, let's integrate this into our, our program. And so we launched the Sustainable Production Forum. And Nice. And so, yes, I'm, I'm still the creative director of that. Um, this year, we um, – we, it is kind of like it's growing up a bit and, and transitioning out into its own, uh, its own event. Um, and so it's pretty exciting. Um, and uh, so it'll be this year. It's uh, November 1st and 2nd okay. at Emily Carr University of Art and Design in Vancouver. Nice. And we are opening it up to the world, really, um, you know, if you're interested in sustainable production and you want to learn about, um, you know, t- the topics of climate emergency, diversity in the industry, and how that drives sustainability, um, and how producers are doing this literally on production, um, and examples around that, um, and then how we talk about sustainability in general, um, these are all plenary topics that we're going to, to discuss this year. And then we've also got a number of workshops that we're curating where people can get hands-on skills um, and knowledge for what to do, what to go out and do right right then after they leave um, nice. the forum and they can implement on set. So. Hmm, that is sweet. It It's like also this is translating into the independent world as well. I've been on independent sets and seen... Uh, um, the things that I've seen on the professional sets uh, translate over. And uh, uh, the the VIF thing, too, there's a lot of independent stuff in there, but it is great that you're informing in in that world as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really interesting. Um, the, the independent production world um, uh, is, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, folks, I've heard that, you know, folks think, oh, well, I may not be able to afford to do this or, or that. But actually, we've got some really good examples of indie filmmakers who are just approaching sustainability from the get-go on their productions. And they are coming out with, you know, um, minimal waste and, uh, you know, being able to do something good for the community and donating food. And, and they can do it. Um, it's, you know, definitely – scaled down in a different beast, but um, you can absolutely integrate sustainability um, on really any type of production, and we want to definitely reach out to those indie filmmakers and say, you know, you can do it too. So, exactly. Um, yeah, definitely a demographic that we we would love to to work more with or hear, hear more from, um, you know, if they are integrating practices. So... Um, so, you know, the forum is an opportunity to bring bring folks together uh, to discuss that. Um, and then things like, you know, this podcast and um, the work we do with Real Green and other opportunities to speak to, to uh, indie filmmakers and, and filmmakers of all types um, is, is really what we're after. So. Oh, yeah. And a lot of these indie filmmakers end up working in the professional film industry one day. So it's almost like getting used to having those uh, things integrated and, and you'll be taken seriously in a job that, you know, if you get picked up in something. Exactly. And it's really important, um, I think, to, to learn about this um, when you're in film school. And that way, when you go to work, um, you know, maybe on an indie film set, but, in a you know, on a larger film set, you can say you know about sustainable production, this is going to, we're going to get to the point where, um, you know, you will need to have knowledge of sustainable production noted on your resume. You know? Right. Um, that makes sense. And we will get, we will get to that point. <laughs> no, that makes a whole lot of sense because uh, uh, going after the schools when and teaching it in the school before they even get on set is the way to go. And that, that really mm-hmm. will implement change. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, we, that's where, you know, habits are formed. And, uh, and so that's an important avenue for um, talking about sustainable production, practicing it, um, making those mistakes, um, seeing what works, might not work um, when you're in film school. So. Exactly. Is there any sort of uh, 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 curriculum or, or um, 
any sort of thing that you guys have come up with that is for the schools or uh, is it just uh, doing talks and, and uh, letting them know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, um, as part of the Real Green program in, um, in D.C., we have a <coughs> higher ed roundtable. Oh, okay. So, so what that is, it's, it's, a, it's a committee where we have representatives from um, the film schools in, in the Lower Mainland, and um, they all come together, and we've had five or six meetings so far uh, to talk about what, what this group wants to do um, and how they might want to integrate sustainability into their curriculum um, and, and student projects and that sort of thing. But one of the things that has come out of it is um, we teach uh, a carbon literacy course as part of Real Green that's open to anyone in the industry. Oh, okay. And it's free to, yeah, it's free to attend. Anybody can take it. Um, and so what started to happen um, with the higher ed group is they said, okay, well, we can integrate you know, sustainability and student projects. That's one thing. But we're going to send all of our students to the carbon literacy course because you've already got that going. Nice. So, um, so we've had, yeah, in May before the semester ended, a group of students to go through uh, the course, and they, it was great. They had great feedback. Um, they got into it. They said one of the comments coming out of that was, "All of our professors should take this course." So, <laughs> That's um, so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, they're old school, the professors, right? They they come from the old ways, I guess. Yeah, so maybe it'll catch on in that in that demographic as well. But um, the point is that um, you know we we do have this course in in BC, and actually, uh, real green. This is not something we you know wholly made up on our own. We have adapted it from a program that. Um, that BAFTA actually, uh, BAFTA in the UK, oh. actually uh, does the same thing. So nice. Real Green collaborates with BAFTA, and we share, you know, curriculum between, you know, what they're doing in the UK and adapting it for, you know, uh, you know Canada, our, our local um, industry. And so we're all teaching the same thing. And that's great because that, you know, that's consistently consistency at a – you know, a larger scale, right? Um, and so we, you know, other jurisdictions have have um, have uh, come on board as well, um, various parts of the world, and and have taken this this carbon literacy course that BAFTA adapted for motion picture, and are also teaching it. So, you know, it's starting to to spread, and folks love it. Um, oh yeah, uh, it's in. Insightful, engaging, talks about climate science, um, and then how that, now knowing what about climate science, how do we integrate it into our personal lives and make, make uh, um, change our, you know, our decisions, our behavior, understand what we're, what, you know, we're consuming, um, and, and then what does it mean for production, and the same sort of thing um, on, a, on a production level. So. Yeah, really pay attention to, to if there is any waste, what, what you can, you know, shore it up on and, and uh, fix it. Because, like I said before, right at the beginning of this, I've seen some times where I'm like, oh my God, what's going on in this production, you know? And they mm-hmm. didn't seem to care. Well, it's not they didn't care. It's just that you need to have certain things to keep the production going. And unless you have someone in place that can change it for the better and change it for the environment, it will always remain that way. And... And um, this is something that over time, every production, hopefully, and, and slowly will become on board and it will work great. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, practice makes perfect, right? So yeah. if we continue, continually, uh, you know, practice uh, integrating um, sustainable practices here and there, figuring out what works, what doesn't. Uh, if we challenge our suppliers to do um, better, provide products that are more sustainable, um, use the leverage of the industry or, you know, leverage of a, uh, an organization, let's say, um, you know, to, to influence the supply chain. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, these are like big oh, changes yeah. that, um, that can potentially happen and that are happening. And um, that really affects, you know, the, the car 
carbon footprint of the industry. And, yeah, and like we said, and, it was about a third of BC or something. I don't know, probably not that big, but <laughs> it's massive. Yeah, yeah. Wow. in BC, the, the film industry is a, is a big industry, so um, so we do have a big impact. Yeah. So uh, can we uh, we can go to your website to um, view all the different events and everything. It's uh, greensparkgroup.com? That's right, greensparkgroup.com. And if folks are interested in... Uh, learning more uh, about what's going on in BC, they can go to realgreen.com. And if folks are interested in um, coming and learning from other filmmakers about sustainable production, um, they can come to the Sustainable Production Forum, and that is sustainableproductionforum.com. So um, lots of different ways to learn about sustainable production and get involved. Oh yeah, totally. It's a, uh, it's it's really uh, a subject that is really a hot and right now, and there are a lot of people who are really interested and want to uh, learn about it. So, um, do you have any advice for uh, any indie productions or anybody who's um, doing things in film that you think could be really easily remedied if they just did it a certain way? Sure. Um, first off, just. Do it. You know, that's the first thing. Decide you're going to do it um, and and do something sustainable on your production. It doesn't have to be elaborate, but okay. just do something. Um, and then I'd say one of the really quick, uh, you know, low-hanging fruit um, is to uh, eliminate plastic. Um, so eliminate plastic utensils. That was seemed Right. Yes. Contaminate all waste in. So if you're going to, from the waste perspective, if you can eliminate plastic and go with um, uh, actually, you know, a wooden or, or a re- reusable metal cutlery, that is fabulous. Well, that especially on indies when there's 20 people or whatever, you totally. know, you can do that. You can get away with that. Totally. So indie filmmakers, that is a great thing to do. Just use reusable. Go to a secondhand store and buy it. Um, and yeah, thrift them. stores have so them for cheap. Money. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that that way, you don't have the extra waste. Um, you don't have to worry about you know contaminating your recycling or compost bin. Um, well, you're you know, saving space, you, money. There's a lot of bonuses with it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, so I would say on the waste side, that's a that's a a pretty low hanging fruit um, practice that you can do. And on, you know, emissions are always, you know, big. So Don't run you your car. Can, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Don't idle. Um, and if you can, uh, you know, use these battery power stations um, instead of, you know, generators, that's great. You're going to save money on fuel. Um, and one other thing that's just, you know, this is for anybody, anybody, um, is just to reduce the amount of meat. Um you know, that you consume. And, and for smaller productions, um, you know, this is going to save you money. You're not, you don't, you know, you don't need to buy meat for a four day shoot, you know? So, right. Um, yeah. Well, th- th- that's so. all great advice and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Zena. Um, I, I love that, uh, you are, changing it for the better slowly and and that uh, actually there's so many human beings that are involved in this and it's slowly over time becoming an actual norm and um i am so happy that uh we are we are going towards a sustainable environmental friendly industry yes yes and thank you thanks for helping to get the word out on this i really appreciate it That was a fantastic interview. Uh, Zena is so sweet. I'll talk to you next Monday. Take care.